Mechanical skill plays, you know, it just plays a huge role if you want to be successful in Fortnite, no doubt. But another aspect not talked about as often is game sense. You know, arguably, it's even more important than mechanics. But what constitutes a smart play? Good question. And like, how do you make them? This time, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at a few play-by-play -play examples from some of your favorite pros. By seeing how they put their big brains to use, we can learn a thing or two and apply that to our own matches. Be sure to like the video today and subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, and uh, in the comment section, tell us who's your favorite pro to learn from. Right now, we're going to be looking at Benji and Savage. But if there's someone out there that you're dying to see, maybe we'll do a video on their gameplay next. And as always, my friends, if you're looking to develop your game sense even further, there's no better place than ProGuys.com. Over there, you're going to find courses that are going to teach you guys to think like a top pro. And for more of a tailor fit experience, you can play with a live coach and have them review your gameplay to tell you exactly what needs to work. Visit ProGuys.com or follow the link in the description to get started. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend. Come on, the one and only Keith Allen. What's going on? Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta. That's right, I got my new Insta at your motivation guy. It is going down. Hey, listen, stay determined, stay focused, stay consistent, keep grinding, don't quit, don't surrender. If you fell down, get back up. We got a lot of work to do. All right, guys, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab my favorite candy. Say it with me. It's that bunch of crunch. Let's get this going. Okay, okay, so let's take a peek at an early game kill from a man that's been popping off in recent cash cups. And that, my friends, is no other than Benji Fishy. More specifically, we're going to look at how structure control is crucial during early game fights. But before we get into this clip, let's quickly talk about early games. Can we do that for a second? Thank you. You know, a lot of early game success comes from tracking your opponent's positions and getting the drop on them. So always keep track of where everyone in your zone lands and try to predict or even trace their looting paths because, you know, if you can, setting up for the kill becomes way more straightforward. For instance, if you know like there is more than one player with you, you can wait to third party the fight. Or if it's just one player, you can find a beautiful high ground spot and then just lay in some rifle shots once you see them. Just make sure you feel confident fighting, have the right weapons, and just a good amount of shields and a decent material count. Overall, you know, situational awareness is one of the most essential early game factors if you want to make it out alive. Okay, so onto the clip. So by tracking the one opponent with him in Lazy Lake, Benji spots him and sets up for the sneak attack. But it doesn't really work since the opponent heard him drop. Now, the fight's on. Benji expands out on his builds, placing floors for control, and making sure to replace every piece that breaks. Knowing his opponent is trying to escape here, he takes out his wall to prevent it. Notice how Benji reads this guy's actions. When he sees him face the wall, he tries to stop the wall break. Then when the enemy pulls out their shotgun, he expects an edit. He's reacting to his opponent's actions flawlessly. Now in control of the ramp, Benji forces the opponent down. And this is where all that structure control from early comes into play. Benji places a ramp to prevent getting dropped down, right? And right after that, he goes through his own floor for some shots. It is just incredible, like, how he can keep track of which pieces are his and which are his opponents. I guess it's just all that box fighting practice he does. All right, so after a couple great tags, Benji's target is really starting to padding now. But look at this play right here, and I mean right here. Benji notices no wall to the left, so he quickly seals it off and removes the last exit point. This dude's hopeless now, man. Since there's nowhere for this guy to go, Benji expects an edit. So he swings his pickaxe, wants to juke, then pulls out a shotgun for the kill. He reads him like a book, like literally. So how did Benji roll this guy and win Lazy Lake? For one, since he tracked his opponent, Benji could take the initiative. He got set up on the rooftop early and he pushed when he knew he could corner him for the kill. Then structure control, Whew. He put down many floors, he took over walls, and he made sure to block off every exit. Without any of that, he wouldn't have dealt the damage he did, and his opponent likely wouldn't have gotten away. Lastly, after getting him low and trapping him in a corner, Benji faked the floor replace and forced the edit. Too bad for that guy though, man, cause Benji and his shotgun, they were ready. So you probably heard this piece of advice for tournaments and arenas before, don't take mid-game fights. And honestly, those are some wise, wise words to follow. Because fighting during the mid-game is loaded with risk. Why? It's a good question. Well, for one, look, the zones are smaller and it's easy to spot any action going on. So third parties run rampant. And I know how much everyone hates getting ganged up on, all right? I get it, it's not fun. And it usually leads to disaster. Not only do you have to deal with that, but also losing your resources right before the end game. If you spend all your mats and healing items to win a mid-game fight, 
it's a challenge to recover. The clock is ticking and the storm is moving, so it's not like you could just go loot and farm up whenever you want. The end game, my friends, is where most points are earned, so heading into that with a full inventory is crucial. Just another reason to avoid mid-game battles. But sometimes, there are situations where you just have to fight. Players might aggressively push you in what seems like a completely random fashion. Maybe it's just because they have some throwaway games or because they aren't the smartest tools in the shed. <laughs> Either way, in certain scenarios, you know, you just can't run or put a stop to it. You've got to stand your ground. Take this cash cup clip from Mr. Savage, for example, all right? He's minding his own business. He's in the zone. He's chilling. When all of a sudden, look at this. There's a maniac pushing him. Mr. Savage immediately boxes up and expands out one more tile to make it harder for his opponent to track his position. Listening to the sound of footsteps, Savage notes it's safe to edit a wall and use his third-person perspective to gain visual info. If at any point his opponent dropped down right here, Mr. Savage would have seen him, his opponent wouldn't, and he'd be able to get a free jump shot in. But his opponent plays it right by building some floors for cover while looking for a new angle. Mr. Savage sees his position as vulnerable right here, right? So he closes the wall up and he heads back into his box. After replacing his opponent's wall, Mr. Savage remains patient. He knows his opponent is going to slip up at some point. He just has to wait. And this is where it all happens. Once Mr. Savage sees the ramp and hears the enemy drop, he knows they're going for a wall replace. So he responds with an insanely quick edit peek and he lands a shot to break their shields. Now, upon hearing this shield break, you know, a lot of players would try cranking up here to finish the kill, right? But that might lead to a really long build battle, which wastes materials and draws unwanted attention. It's just so dangerous, man, to just build fight when third parties can knock everything down just like that. There's a reason everyone says that box fighting is the meta. So, Mr. Savage stays low, which is smart, pressuring his opponent with his rifle and he just waits for another mistake. This guy goes for a drop shot, but Savage was ready to trade with them, right? Now, his opponent is low in health and has given up high ground. When Mr. Savage drops the ramp and goes for the wall replace, notice how he pulls out his shotgun after a single swing. Just in case his opponent goes for a quick edit play, once he sees that it isn't happening, he goes back to the pickaxe, steals the wall, and he finishes the kill. So, a few things right here to take note, man. First off, high ground isn't everything. Mr. Savage plays it low because it conserves materials and just keeps him safe from third parties. From within his box, he could just wait for his opponent to drop down, which he then can just use that to capitalize on mistakes. From the low ground, you could use the third person camera for some cheeky peeks, gaining sight while revealing nothing. And pulling out your shotgun during wall takes will keep your opponent on their toes. It can even save your life for crying out loud because, you know, if they go for a quick edit, you can react and shoot first. Next, moving on to some in-game tips now. All right, so by analyzing 200 IQ Mr. Savage again, we're going to see how the decisions this guy makes affects his kill rate and survivability. All right, so just before we start, take a look at this guy's inventory. Mr. Savage, he went into the in-game with a rifle, a shotgun, six minis, and uh, would you look at that? two full stacks of floppers. Maybe he's trying to start a sushi business or something like that, but uh, you're gonna see in a second just how precious these fish can be. So Mr. Savage is controlling the high ground right here, which depending on if you have the materials or not, can be the most advantageous position to hold. He tarps in away from the storm, but make sure to waterfall down anytime he's up too high. A rule of thumb for high ground control is always be connected to the structures below you. If you can't connect, then you're too high up. Savage gets in a limb and he goes to pressure someone else when, surprisingly, he gets laser from somebody inside the storm. With all those floppers, man, it's a cinch for him to just get his health back. Taking a bit of storm damage turns into no big deal as well. Unfortunately, while looking for the player behind him, he gets beamed yet again. But just look at this scenario. Absolutely certain death if he didn't have those fish, all right? And it actually works out for him. He picks up a free kill his opponent never saw coming. He even takes his time to loot letting everyone else just finish each other off while he just relaxes in the storm. And after looting and while working his way in, he helps eliminate another player, then rockets to pick another one up himself. Believe us, my friends, look, no one ever expects the storm flight. It's a very strong position to be. Granted that if you have some floppers or like slurp fish to devour, Finally, back inside the safe zone. It's one versus one, all right? Once Mr. Savage hears his opponent drop on the ground, he immediately goes for height. But so does the enemy. And after a crazy, gut-clinching standoff, Mr. Savage gets the win. So, what can we learn from Mr. Savage's late game plays? Okay, here's one for starters. Try and head into the end game with some fish. Anytime you're looting and you see a harpoon or even a rod, just go fishing if you have the time, all right? These things are absolute game changers and should never be ignored. If you're going to hold high ground, don't be too many layers high. Preferably, like, stay within two tiles of the player below you so you can connect if you're ever shot down. 
Finally, if you got some fish, don't be afraid of the storm, man. As we saw, no one seems to expect players in the storm. Even Mr. Savage didn't know where he got laser from. For staying alive and finally sneaking your limbs, fish are where it's at. So, developing game sense is tough. You know, it's not something that you could just learn by hopping into creative. I wish it was, but it's not. Instead, it takes a lot of evaluation, not only of yourself and the mistakes you make in-game, but of other players too. That's why, you know, one of the better ways to learn is by watching pros and questioning their actions. What decisions are they making that lead to success? Did they use a particular technique? How was that beneficial? And obviously, you know, there are more things to ponder as you analyze, but believe me, no one becomes great at something just on their own. It takes time. All right, guys, once again, this is Your Motivation Guy. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. Once again, don't quit. If you make mistakes, hey, get back up, keep going. If you feel discouraged, keep practicing, keep grinding, keep learning information, and keep trying new things out. And I promise you, man, you're gonna see results. You are, I believe in you guys, all right? Make sure that you're making the right choice by watching us, and we thank you guys for that. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like if you haven't yet, and subscribe for more daily videos. You can always support us by using code pro guys in the item shop when you buy any skins we'll see you soon